Hello guys and gals, it's me, not Mudahar here, with a potentially positive video about Wizards of the Coast. I know, especially after everything I just talked about, I'm feeling vaguely optimistic with a big asterisk on top. So stick around, let's talk about this new post on Venture Beat that was sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. Huge shout out to all the members of the Known At Ones Patreon for letting me continue doing so much experimental stuff on my channel and cover cool news outlets like this. I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying reading up on it. So let's dive into this article and why, if it's all authentic, we could actually get a little bit excited about some stuff and feel safer about a whole lot more. So yes, the first things that should jump out at you about this article is that it is sponsored. It is sponsored specifically by Wizards of the Coast to be a report piece about Wizards of the Coast. So there's already this level of them getting involved with the news article, so take of that what you will. It's also not specifically written by any specific author, rather it's just credited to Venture Beat staff. Whether that means that this was basically written by Wizards of the Coast and then just edited by VB author, uh, editors, I have no idea. Again, another weird little red flag, but I'm not gonna focus on them. I'm going to take this little news article on Venture Beat as verbatim, at least for now, I'm going to choose to look optimistically at what this says. So let's dive into how Wizards of the Coast is exploring generative AI to improve developer productivity and test player accessibility aids. Oh, and by the way, this is presented by Google Cloud. There's a lot of fingers in this pie right now. I don't know if this was actually sponsored by Google Cloud because Wizards of the Coast is actually teaming up with Google Cloud for their generative AI research and development. Let's look at this. Wizards of the Coast, creators of D&D and Magic the Gathering, is actively evolving a digital strategy with the goal to embrace new audiences and new ways of working while staying true to a long, loyal audience who values human creativity at the heart of innovation. Like, it's very clear right here in front of us that Wizards of the Coast is actively vocalizing, saying, no, 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 we care about the human aspect of things. We want to do the human aspect of things. Whether they're telling the truth, who the hell knows? But that is what they're saying, and they're trying to make it very clear to you that they care. Generative AI is revolutionizing the games industry by enabling developers to craft personalized experience, automate repetitive tasks, we'll get back to that in a little bit, and improve accessibility. To expand the ways both new and existing players can engage with their favorite games, Wizards is collaborating with Google Cloud partner Datatonic. Now, I had to look into Datatonic because I had never heard of them before, and overall, they appear to be behind-the-scenes tech support. Like, beyond tech support, they help build and develop things. Like, they have been on their own website Google Cloud Partner of the Year. They have a lot of things listed on their website about what they do, what they can do, what they have done. Uh, a lot of it honestly kind of makes me feel more comfortable. Still not necessarily believing that they're all in it for the good and that they're not going to rip anything off in the future, because at this point we've been trained to associate the terms AI with theft, even though that is not the case. Not all AI is theft, and some of it has been ethically trained. Datatonic talks about deploying machine learning models, uh, access to self-service analytics, which is something that a lot of companies do enjoy. Anything that can get you access to your own analytics faster is great. That's why we love, well, love, the YouTube analytics page. It's what lets us know what is and isn't working, and is why I'm making more of these videos. But there is something listed on their page that does give me hope. It is the Responsible AI section, where they say, Unlock AI's full potential to transform industries and improve lives while maintaining safety and security by developing and deploying AI responsibly. What does that mean? I have no idea. It could be a bunch of corporation gobbledygook, or maybe they do care about responsibly, ethically used AI. Because I'm hoping that somewhere out there, there's got to be a company that does believe in AI, but also believes in doing it correctly to the point where they know we care about the ethical sourcing it's sounding like veg like veganism at this point i swear but we care about how ethically sourced the ai itself is what is it trained on what libraries does it use call me foolishly optimistic especially because they've worked with google for nine years and google is as corrupt as they come i'm sure you don't get that big without being corrupt but 
maybe there's a world where they do care about being ethically responsible with AI, which would mean Wizards of the Coast is making a good step by partnering up with them. They're working to implement generative AI proof-of-concept projects that will enable developers to improve efficiency and create new ways for players to learn to play. This is a really weird choice to focus on, so let's talk about it. I'll zoom down the article a bit. Though before we zoom down the article, it's worth mentioning in parentheses, again, leading me to believe this might have been written by Wizards themselves and sent to VentureBeat for them to publish under their own name, but it does say... Not to be confused with using Gen AI for art or illustration. Wizards has made it clear to all artists and writers contributing to the franchise to stay very clear of using Gen AI tools. So, again, as long as this is all truthful, it's not going to be rug pulled out from under us. I'm putting a lot of faith in Wizards here. I know. But if we take this at face value, this is really good to read. And sometimes in life, you just have to take things at face value and try to believe people. You know, a lot of the times, you're going to get stabbed bleeding in an alley and they're going to take your wallet. But sometimes you'll be right. So the first thing that's a little bit weird and kind of negative in my opinion is that has anyone here heard of Spell Table? And does anybody use it? Because apparently Wizards has been using Google Cloud to build things since 2020, where they made Spell Table. The, you know, the ultimate online Magic the Gathering multiplayer app. It's cool by idea where it's just a Zoom call, but your individual screen comes with card recognition software. So like if your card is on the table, somebody can click it and it'll pull up like an actual picture of the card you can read clearly. So you can play with your physical Magic cards anywhere in the world. Kind of neat. This happened. So they've been working with Google Cloud before in the past. Scott Newman, VP of Wizards of the Coast and Digital Gaming Head of Technology said, Gen AI will help empower the creation of new experiences that simply wouldn't be possible otherwise, breathing innovation into our games, both new and old, while keeping human ingenuity at the center. They're really trying to hammer home the human aspect of this, which, like, I guess they kind of have to, if they want even a modicum of a chance that the internet won't continue to hate them. Well, A, they should stop putting copyright strikes on innocent channels. And B, they should not send the Pinkertons after somebody again. But hitting human ingenuity is a good close bronze medal. The Google Cloud Director of Games goes on to add, Scalable infrastructure and an open data ecosystem that can deliver high-quality clean data to optimize analysis and insights is critical to realize the full potential of generative AI and build truly living games. With Google's Gen AI, Wizards of the Coast is improving player experiences, creating exciting new gameplay possibilities, and attracting new audiences. That was a lot of words, but luckily the rest of this article sort of breaks that down and talks about it. If you're confused and struggling to follow along at home, don't worry, I was too. I had to look into a lot of this. A lot of that fancy words, especially the scalable infrastructure, open data ecosystem, optimized analysis, all of that is basically saying we want to use generative AI to make the business side of things easier as well as the practical meta work that needs to be done like pulling up finance sheets looking up records looking at being able to pull things out of a hat thanks to generative ai with the ai working on the factual documents and information that has been put in by a person so let's go over the three transformative use cases for generative ai magic the gathering for everyone i'm gonna come right up front and say i do not understand this statement Let's go over it. Basically, what they're saying, I'll quote Newman here. The goal is to break down the barrier to entry, which will open the game up to a whole swath of players who could otherwise be intimidated by some of its complexity. It's a way for us to learn how to build and eventually deploy AI in player-facing form and also see how players respond to and interact with it. What they're saying that this generative AI is going to do is, quote, be able to query the tool in real language about all aspects of gameplay, from questions about specific card interactions and card categories, to deck building and strategy. When they do say real language, because it'll come up a couple more times in this video, real language, to my understanding, means talking to it like a person. You can say, hey, Gen AI, what resolves first, my creature entering the battlefield or counterspell? First off, most people aren't just picking the game up and playing with other people who have never played before. Sure, there's the rare case where maybe you and your spouse go and buy two structure decks, but you know what those structure decks come with? 
an instruction manual. Now, what I will give wizards here is the instruction manual is not going to cover all of the millions of sub-rules and exceptions that Magic the Gathering does have in its game. I rarely ever play a full game of Magic without somebody pausing to say, wait, how does this work? So right now, it feels like it's going to be an automatic Googling tool that you can ask in real time. You can say, Gen AI, what resolves first? And Gen AI should give you the right answer, assuming it's programmed correctly. I imagine that'll be fairly simple in the grand scheme of AI to program, because they just need to make an AI that only searches through the rules documents and sub-rules documents. As long as it doesn't just try to Google the answer, you should always get the right answer every time, unless the certain exceptions can confuse even the Gen AI. Which, with Magic's complexity at times, I wouldn't doubt it. So this one's largely unoffensive, it's just like, why not just Google it? You have a phone in your pocket at all times, just Google the answer anyway. The next two uses of Gen AI have nothing to do with gaming whatsoever, and they are actually the epitome of what I think AI should be used for. Democratizing data access for business intelligence. Those are big words. Let's make it simpler. To quote Newman again, Everyone, from engineers to analysts, will be able to easily query the data set for the information they're looking for just by using natural language. Like I said before, this is going to allow anybody, even if they don't know how AI works, to say, hey, Gen AI, show me our finance reports from the last five business days. This is something that, again, used as just a tool, so on board with, I think it can make things very efficient. You know, if it can accurately and correctly pull the finance reports in the data set you asked for with natural language, then that saves you the, let's say you are the head of your department and you need to find your last five business days finances. Right now, unless you had the file on your computer, you would likely have to reach out to somebody in your department, probably the finance department, and say, hey, can you email me the finance results from the last five days. You would need to send that email, wait for them to see that email, draft their response, link the finance report for that data set, and then email that back to you. If you can eliminate that awkward five to 10 minute long disconnect where you needed the information right then, you had to wait for it. If you can turn those 10 minutes into 10 seconds, phenomenal. That is the exact kind of thing AI should be using, making everybody's life easier and not replacing a person. And boosting development productivity for engineering is just about the same. However, rather than being focused on how you can query for things, this is focused on automating very mundane tasks. I assume, like, say, formatting. They don't go into any detail about the types of routines this is going to simplify. It just says that it is going to reduce repetitive programming tasks and accelerate routine reviews of changes to the code bases of projects, basically allowing the creators and developers to spend more time editing, fine-tuning, and coming up with new ideas than they would spend on formatting and all of the other things that take a long time because they are just manually repetitive. What I'm not a fan of is this other quote from Newman. The goal is to help our teams keep up with the increasing player expectations and exceed them, meeting the required rapid pace of content creation without feeling overwhelmed and, oh, of course, most of all, stay creative and human. Definitely stay human. This worries me. To me, this says we are going to use this generative AI to pump out more content. Our workers' lives are not going to be made easier by this generative AI. In fact, we are going to work them twice as hard once we give them access to it to pump out twice as many Magic the Gathering sets, twice as many D&D &D adventures, because the Gen AI should be making it easier for them to do that, and thus, you know, A equals B. Not a big fan of that would love for it to make their lives easier and pump out a little bit more. Also kind of weird to throw that it's the player's fault. You know, increasing player expectations. It's our fault that they need to pump out more content. Not that the content needs to be higher quality, they just need more of it. Not a fan of how that's worded. Maybe it's weirdly out of context, but again, this was sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. So this is saying everything they want it to say. It goes on to say that Wizards of the Coast is basically creating its own little isolated AI environment within the Google Cloud for them to work on and link up with Hasbro's ecosystems, or they call them tech ecosystems apparently. And it is interesting, you know, they do say here that they're not just taking Google Gemini and giving it to Wizards of the Coast. No, Wizards of the Coast is developing a proprietary AI program 
to use for their specific reasons and purposes, and it will be designed from the ground up for that purpose by Datatonic. I am confident that it's only a matter of time before we see these types of generative AI applications in various forms, either directly in our games or in companion apps and other ancillary experiences. I really hope there never comes a time when you need your phone to play Magic the Gathering. I have nothing wrong with an app that you can speak into to get a ruling. That's completely fine, doesn't hurt anybody, doesn't steal any jobs. It removes a good chunk of that human interaction though. I may be alone in this, sound off in the comments if you agree, but sometimes discussing and debating the rulings with a friend before finally giving in and Googling it is part of the fun. I do enjoy trying to logic out how a rule should work. And it just builds on that human interaction. At the end of the day, we are humans, we are flawed, and engaging with each other's flaws or misunderstandings, while it might be irritating in the moment, is still what makes us human. It still builds that connection between one another because yes, you debated and one of you was proven right when you did inevitably Google it. But if you can just hold on, what resolves first? It removes that entire human component. And I feel like with every AI and technological component you add to a human game like Magic the Gathering, because there's no moving parts, it is just the humans enforcing the technically made up rules for what the cards do based on what they say. It is all human. But the more technology you get involved, the less it becomes a human experience and the more it becomes a video game. And they close out the entire article saying that, hey, we're human, we love humans, some of our best friends are humans. And because of that, our stance is not changing when it comes to Gen AI. I'm very curious, however, if they're not gonna use Gen AI for art and creative content, why does the principal AI engineer list asset creation and audio generation? Are those not art and creative content? And if so, how do you plan to ethically source and generate those wizards? I'm curious. I do like what you've said in this article. I'll link the article in the description for y'all to read. It could be a lot of gobbledygook made to placate us. But for once, I'm going to be willfully ignorant of their past transgressions and pray this is what they're doing and that there's nothing hard and bad going on behind the scenes, no matter how likely that may be. Oh, but don't worry. The second they screw and slip up, I will be covering it on this channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please be nice to each other out there. It's so easy to start spewing your hate and vitriol at your fellow commenters just because it's anonymous and they're there. Just remember there's another human on the other side of that. No matter which stance you take when it comes to AI or art or the future of these games that we love, just love your fellow man. It's not that hard. Be chill. If you're gonna debate, debate. Don't argue. There's a difference. Take care out there, y'all. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.